If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably. What is up guys? Thank you for joining me here today. Today, I've got one hell of an episode for you. We're gonna go back into the early 2000s where Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger gave an update to the shareholders at the annual Berkshire Hathaway meeting. In the specific part of the annual update, we're gonna go in where one of the shareholders asks a question around diversification of stock and diversification of assets. And if that is even wise to do such a thing, as many conventional education pieces tells us to do. So conventional wisdom dictates that it is essential to have diversification in your stocks or your asset classes. And you're often told that it is vitally important to diversify in order to protect yourself from risk. However, some of the most celebrated investors, Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, George Soros, talks about the virtues of having a concentrated portfolio or concentrated, concentrated asset class. And he goes further and he says that it makes very little sense for people who know what they are doing to have a diversified portfolio. So, without further ado, let's go and have a closer look at this annual meeting where Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger answers this very specific question. Mark Hake. I'm from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, and I am very interested in your policies on diversification and also how you concentrate your investments. And I've studied your annual reports going back a good number of years, and there's been years where you had a lot of stocks in your marketable, equitable securities portfolio, and there was one year where you only had three in 1987. Um, so I have two questions. Um, given the number of stocks that you have in the portfolio now, what does that imply about your view of the market in terms of is it fairly valued, that kind of uh, idea? And second of all, uh, whenever you, it seems that whenever you take a new investment, you never take less than about 5% and never more than about 10% of the total portfolio with that new position. And I wanted to see if I'm correct about that. Yeah, well, on the second point, that, there, that really isn't correct. We, uh, we have positions which you don't even see because we only listed the ones above 600 million in the last report, and obviously those are all smaller positions. Sometimes be that's because they're smaller companies and we couldn't get that much money in. Sometimes it's because the price has moved up after we've bought them. And sometimes it's because we're, we may be selling the position down even. But uh, so we have no, there's nothing magic. We like to put a lot of money in things that, uh, that we feel strongly about. And that gets back to the diversification question. Uh, you know, we, we think diversification is, as practiced generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. Uh, they, diversification is a protection against ignorance. I mean, if you wanna make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. Yeah, you know, if all you have to achieve is, is average, uh, it it's, uh, it it's, uh, may preserve your job, but it, it's a confession in our view that you don't really understand the businesses that you own. And that is so true. Diversification is generally speaking for people who do not know how to analyze businesses. So I firmly believe that you are significantly better off to cut an inch wide and a mile deep. Find companies that match your values. And find companies that you understand. And wait patiently when the right time comes up, when they are on sale and when you can buy them at a bargain price. Um. You know, I base, I mean, as on a personal portfolio basis, you know, I own one stock, you know, but it's a business I know, it, and, and it leaves me very comfortable. Uh, so, 
you know, do I, do I need to own 28 stocks in order to you know, have proper diversification? You know, and, uh, it'd be nonsense. And within Berkshire, I could pick out three of our businesses, and I would, I would be very happy if they were the only businesses we owned and I had all my money in Berkshire. Now, I love it, the fact that we can find more than that and that we keep adding to it. But three wonderful businesses is, is, is more than... Uh, it's more than you need in this life to do very well, and uh, uh, the average, the average person isn't going to run into that. I mean, if you look at how the fortunes were built in this country, uh, they weren't built out of a portfolio of 50 companies. They were they were built by someone who, who uh, identified with us, with a wonderful business. Coca-Cola is a great example. A lot of fortunes have been built on that, and there aren't 50 Coca-Colas. You know, there aren't 20. If there were, it'd be fine. We could all go out and diversify like crazy among that group and, and get results that would be equal to owning the really wonderful one. But you're not going to find it. And uh, and the truth is you don't need it. I mean, if you, if you have a really wonderful business is very well protected against against the vicissitudes of the economy over time and, and, and the competition. I mean, you know, we're talking about businesses that are resistant to effective competition. And three of those will be better than 100 average businesses and, uh, uh, and, and they'll be safer incidentally I mean they there is less risk in owning three easy to identify wonderful businesses there than there is in owning 50 uh, well-known big businesses and uh, uh, it's amazing what has been taught over the years in finance classes about that but uh, uh, I can assure you that that uh, I would rather pick if, if I had to bet the next 30 years on the fortunes of, uh, of my family that would be dependent upon the income from a given group of businesses, I would rather pick three businesses from those we own than own a diversified group of 50. Charlie? Yeah, you know, what he's saying is that much of what is taught in modern corporate finance courses is twaddle. Do you want to elaborate on that, Charlie? <laughs> you cannot believe this stuff. I mean, <laughs> it, it's uh, modern portfolio theory, and uh, yeah, it's it's it has no utility. But I mean, it, it, it you know it will tell you how to do average, but you know I I I, I think uh, anybody can figure out how to do average in fifth grade. I mean, it, it's just not that difficult. And, uh, it's, it's elaborate, and you know, there's lots of little Greek letters and all kinds of things to make you feel that you're in the big leagues, but it, uh, there is no value added. <laughs> I have great difficulty with it because I am something of a student of dementia, and I have... <laughs> yeah, we hang around a lot together. And I can ordinarily <laughs> classify dementia you know, on some uh, theory structure of models, but the modern portfolio theory... Uh, it involves a type of dementia I just can't even classify. No. Something very strange is going on. <laughs> yeah. If you find if you find three wonderful businesses in your life, you'll get very rich. And and if you understand them, bad things aren't going to happen to that, those three. I mean that that's the characteristic of it. That, uh... By the way, maybe that's the reason there's so much dementia. If you believe what Warren said, you could teach the whole course in about a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the high priest wouldn't have any edge over the lay people, and that, that right. never sells well. <laughs> right. Back in 2008, during GFC, and again in the early 2020s, the question was asked to Warren Buffett whether or not he was upset that the stock market was going down, and that, in turn, his portfolio was going down. And Warren replied and said, no, he is actually very happy that it is going down because this is the time frame and this is the period where he buys most of his stock. And this is the period where he buys his businesses. When you know what you own and you understand the business, it can be an absolutely wonderful time to buy when the market is down and when those businesses are selling at a discount. And 
if we can't evaluate a carbon steel company, we don't buy it. It doesn't mean it isn't a good buy. It doesn't mean it isn't selling for a fraction of its worth. It just means that we don't know how to evaluate it. You know, if, if we can't evaluate uh, the sensibilities of putting in a chemical plant or something in Brazil, we don't do it. If somebody else knows how to do it, you know, more power to them. There are all kinds of people that know how to make money in ways that, that we don't. But, you know, it's a free world and everybody can, can invest in those sort of things, but they would be making a mistake, a big mistake, to do it through us. And Warren Buffett could not have said it any clearer right there. There are businesses out there that he doesn't understand that will perform remarkably well, but he emphasizes that you have to operate inside your circle of competency. You have to work in the area that you know and that you understand. And that is vitally important that we go back to where I said earlier that it's significantly better to cut an inch wide and a mile deep. Please always remember that. Guys, if you like this video, please smash the like button, hit subscribe, and until next time, I'm Frank Rockerfield. See you later.